Where, where did you want to sit now, Chris? Right. Just <laughs> I'm going to lay on the... All right, the, yeah. so he's going to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. By the end of the day, I might be face down on the rug. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I, I know that uh, in some of our past conversations, and, and, and we've talked a lot over the past few months, um, you've said that CBA has the body of a big brewer and, and the soul of a craft brewer. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you could elaborate on that sure. as it relates to being a national brand. Sure. The reason I use that uh, expression is, you know, I think, as I said, if you're going to be national, it takes being national. You need to have the supply chain um, as sophisticated as any big player would have. You need to have a sales organization that spans the entire U.S. You need to have a national retail sales group that can call on Buffalo Wild Wings centrally, but can call on the regional spots. You need to have breweries and quality standards so that you're not afraid that Audible uh, consumed in Boston is going to taste different than Audible consumed in Colorado or in California. Those are all typically big brewer traits. Uh, the consistency, the bi-coastal breweries, the supply chain, the sales organization. We have to have that. It's the price of poker if you want to be national. But I think what we try to bring to it is, I say, the soul of a craft brewer because we don't necessarily think big. We try to think small and we try to think again through the eyes of the consumer, but not as somebody who has the luxury of $100 million ad campaigns, but who has to bring our brands to life and allow themselves to be revealed in a little bit more creative ways. So uh, <clears throat> on that notion of, of being a national craft brand, um, there, you know, there's a, a wide range of folks uh, in our audience from the brewery side of the business some of whom probably can't even fathom being a national brand for maybe another 20 or something years. Right. Um, but let's assume for this question that you're hoping to earn distribution in all 50 states in the future. Um, there is this sort of element of being a, a complete brand. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it, you can look to a number of examples like Sam Adams or C Sierra Nevada for this. Um, how can emerging craft brands build that identity while still sort of maintaining that local, uh, the local relationships, um, sort of that, that soul of the craft mm -hmm. brewer, like you say? I, I think it comes down to, again, being true to yourself. So one thing we love about having the portfolio is we believe none of our brands have to overextend themselves. So Widmer Brothers can be crafty and do more esoteric things and these crazy collaborations like we do with Cigar City or like we're doing with the Commons or other places. Red Hook doesn't need to get into that. Red Hook can do something different, and Kona can do something different still. So I think the notion of being a complete brand, meaning you have to cover all bases, is one I don't subscribe to. I think you need to kind of pick your battles, pick what you want to stand for, and then do that. And for us, find ways to talk to that consumer or to reach the consumer on that occasion. So concrete examples, it's why we do things like the affiliation with Dan Patrick on Red Hook. It's why we do a lot of things with um, Stand Up Paddle on Kona and why we do a lot around water and the importance of water on the Kona brand. Or it's why we do a lot in the food space with Widmer Brothers. All of those are ways to help the brand reveal itself in a complete way, but actually targeted to whatever consumer or whatever it's trying to be. Right, finding those synergies. Absolutely. Um, so you, you briefly mentioned occasions there, um, and I know this is your this is your big talking point these days is occasions, and it's it's pretty evident in the way that the portfolio is set up now. Um, you know, like you said, various uh, beer offerings for different occasions, and and now even cider. Um, so uh, I guess why does CBA like this idea of occasion so much, um, and are its brands a reflection of occasion-based consumer buying habits? Uh, they are a reflection of consumer-based buying habits. And the reason we're so enamored with occasions is if you take a look at the data, it's easy to say that the consumer is confused. Uh, it's easy to say that the consumer isn't loyal anymore. And it's easy to say that there's too much clutter for them to process through. And for us, the framework of occasions and mindset, uh, uh, mind state, uh, helps us, mindset helps us to understand how is the consumer choosing in that occasion? So when we're all out at lunch, you have a fantastic list of beers out there um, that all of you have provided that we can kind of surf through. And for us to say, hey, what made you choose one thing or another, there needs to be a framework for us to uh, adopt or for us to subscribe to in order for us to be able to try to get you to do that again. And data suggests that in certain occasions, given certain choices, that's when consumers will become predictable. 
um, but they won't necessarily be predictable at an aggregate level. Uh, switching gears a little bit for just the last couple questions here before we move on. Um, CBA is a, a company that has the ability to make a couple of uh, acquisitions. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you've said in the past that you're always looking for opportunities. doesn't necessarily mean it'll happen. Um, what sorts of things are you paying attention to and what would you look for when you're investing in a new, in a new brand? I think it would have to be complementary. So, you know, back to your vision and understanding of what has to happen, we would not look to um, acquire or partner with a brand that we felt sat on top of something that we're doing. It would have to allow us to bring that brand into the family in a way that was complementary or synergistic. So that could be in terms of the styles of beer. It could be in terms of the region that it's dominant in. Uh, I've been very, uh, very forthright, as we all have, that if you take a look at that chart, you know, states like Texas, states like Florida, um, parts of the Midwest are all very interesting areas for a lot of us. And I think we'll start to see increased craft activity there. So anything that would be complementary and help us to round out our offerings to a consumer or help us to be more effective in a certain geography would probably be uh, things that were interesting to us. Do, do they need to be national or could they be smaller no. local brands? They can be uh, small and local. Uh, you know, I think again, the key is not trying to make something out of something it's not. So, you know, Red Hook and Widmer Brothers were largely national already. Uh, we've been pretty methodical with Kona as we've grown it to make sure that we let that brand grow in a way that's authentic and true to itself. So if there was a small local brand that was perfectly content being a small local brand and allowed us to continue to satisfy consumers and complement the portfolio, we'd probably be comfortable doing that. Right. And then um, one final question for you. I mean, I know uh, CBA is a, it's a publicly traded company. So um, I, I guess, how do you sell this <coughs> CBA package uh, to the folks on Wall Street that are analyzing and paying attention to you guys? And, and what do they like about it? Yeah, I, I think, ironically enough, if you go onto our web page and you take a look at our investor presentation, you'll see a couple of those same slides. So in much the same way that I talked to you today is help them to understand what the story is. I think... Uh, you heard in the previous presentation that the space is attractive to investors, be they private equity or be they capital uh, based or be they share equity consumers uh, looking to invest in a stock. So I think craft beer is known and I think what investors are looking for is, does this make sense? And then importantly, do you have the talent to pull this off? Uh, because as important for most investors as our brand portfolio is our talent portfolio and whether or not we have what it takes to make this happen because everybody is mindful of how companies go bad and that typically lies in the talent, not necessarily the business model. Well, I, I think uh, you certainly have a number of offerings in your portfolio that offer plenty of occasions for those analysts <laughs> to drink. There will be plenty more occasions for us to drink today as well. So uh, thank you cool. very much. Thanks, Chris.